second job since then. First job was uh, as an ISO Information System Security Officer at BAE Systems. So my, uh, my clearance came in handy for that. Then I decided I want to move um, to the cloud. Now I'm a cloud compliance analyst for a small startup called Remedic. So I'm always looking to learn new things and you know, going from on-premise situations, um, which is common with most DoD contractors, to a cloud environment, there's definitely a lot to learn there. Um, so it's been exciting. You know, I'm on my only, my only my third week with the new company and it's a great environment and a lot, a lot of technology to learn. So when I first got my job at BAE, I got thrown into an on-premises situation with a lot of legacy systems, um, as old as XP from Windows, and we use some older versions of Red Hat. And that's common in the DoD industry because you know, we, we like to use software and operating systems to the end of their lifespan. Um, and also, if there's older technology we're developing for, we need to have those older operating systems to be compatible. So that's where I started. I was, I was working in environments with XP machines, Windows 7 machines, Windows 10 machines, Linux, Red Hat, version 6, 7, and 8. And I think there was even a, a DOS machine somewhere. And I, I, was, I couldn't believe that. But um, anyway, so from there, I got this new job in the cloud, this, this magical place called the cloud. <laughs> Now I'm working with AWS, Azure, and GCP, all of them. And I shouldn't say it, all of them, but those are the big three. And that environment is similar. A lot of your networking principles and domain principles still apply. It's just sort of things called something different. There's new names and there's new functions. It's a lot more flexibility with cloud environments. So I'd say, I, I see the industry moving more towards cloud, a lot of people do. Um, sure, there'll always be scenarios like in the DoD where you need on-premises, you need these older operating systems to do what you need to do and service your clients, but the majority of the industry is moving to the cloud. So, one comes to mind, the blockchain. Blockchain, it's been around for a few years now. I mean, it's most commonly seen in cryptocurrency, but it does have other uses. It's, it's a form of non-repudiation, which is basically, uh, in simple terms, it's, it's saying that information can be verified if multiple sources verify that it's this one thing. That way, if someone else comes around and says, oh, it's something different, well, the majority has verified it's this one thing, so that's what, that's, Basically what non-repudiation means, it's information verification or a data verification. And I see that playing a huge part in, in the ever-growing technology field. Well, for one, LinkedIn is a huge help. So it's like, it's like the Facebook of, of professional people. Um, people are always posting videos and there's articles, there's links to seminars and conventions online, all virtual. And they're always talking about these new and upcoming things. This most recent one I, I remember hearing about was this Log4j vulnerability found in Apache servers. Huge deal. It was like, it's present in so many web servers and um, someone just, someone just found it, you know, and, and put it out there and that was just all LinkedIn was talking about, at least by the LinkedIn feed, because I'm in cybersecurity, I connect with cybersecurity professionals, and that's what my feed is based on. And as far as, as training, well, I just, you know, I look at, you know, what the threat landscape looks like, and I see, well, what would benefit, what would be most useful in keeping things secure? So, uh, you know, I saw, like I said before, I saw the big movement, big shift to the cloud infrastructure. So my next certs I plan on getting are cloud certs. I want to get the foundational certification for AWS, Azure, and GCP, just to, so I understand them. And, you know, eventually get the security specialization certifications in those infrastructures, which will allow me to better secure clouds in an efficient and, you know, proper manner. The 
work environment will always be different from an educational environment. Granted, Divergence Labs helped me a lot with understanding how domains work and how networks operate, uh, which is important. So when you're monitoring your own network, you know what to look for. Um, so I was on the job. A lot of things I learned that I, I maybe didn't get as much exposure to in Divergence would be dealing with people. Dealing with people because you know cybersecurity. It's a lot. There's a lot of service-based work involved. You know, you're not just kind of like at your desk pen testing all the time. You know, sure pen testing is great, but there's still the reporting afterwards. After you're done with your engagement, you have to write the report and communicate that to the client. You know, when you're dealing with compliance and keeping things compliant, you have to ensure that the users and and employees in your domain are operating according to this compliance framework. You know, and they're not, not everyone's like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not all compliant. <laughs> so, so you have to learn how to be tactful, very tactful with people who don't want to do things that you tell them to do. <laughs> and that's something that I, I feel like that's a skill I really strengthened during my time at BAE Systems and this new job. So there's a few profiles that come to mind. There's the seasoned sysadmin who just dislikes everyone. <laughs> they threw communication skills out the window. <laughs> um, you know, they just, they go in, they, they fix their stuff, they know what they're doing, and they leave, and you don't see them. <laughs> then there's people like me, young and hungry. You know, they're, they're usually the ones bugging Batman, like Robin. <laughs> you know, we're, we're thirsting for knowledge, and what you gotta do is you gotta fight the complacency. You know, some, there gets to a point where you get really good at your job, and then you get complacent, you know? You're like, I don't need to thirst through knowledge anymore because I am great at what I do. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, complacency is a beautiful thing. But you should still try to stay on top of what's going on in the technology field because technology is one of those things that's always changing, it's always evolving. And um, you, you, if you want to progress, if you want to progress in your career, then don't get complacent. You want to be comfortable? Sure. Yeah. You know, be at SIS admin one for for the rest of your life. Okay, so one thing I can say is that before I went to the Virgins Academy, I knew nothing about cybersecurity. <laughs> Absolutely. I know I knew computer things. I, I built a few computers just for fun. You know, I'm a gamer on certain occasions. <laughs> But uh, I knew nothing about cybersecurity. And when I was doing my research on the field, I was like, I found ethical hacking. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, you mean, you mean companies actually pay people to hack their systems? That's awesome. So then I found the pen testing course at Divergence, and I'm like, okay, this is awesome. This is a great course. I'm learning a lot. I could be a hacker. So I, for a while, I was under the impression that that the entire cybersecurity industry was just hacking. <laughs> um, throughout my course at Divergence, I learned that wasn't true. There's red team, there's blue team, there's a purple team. I think it's a green team even. Uh, there's so many colored teams, but there's offensive, there's defensive, there's compliance. Um, those are the three main ones I think of. I think of pen testers, I think of SOC centers, and I think of compliance teams and auditors. So, the misconception was, I thought I was only hacking. The reality is that, that it is it's much more, there's a lot of parts that are played in this overall vision of cybersecurity. I just, I wanted to change. And I wanted it so badly that I was willing to, to risk failing just to try to learn something new and get qualified in a new field. So to those people who are out there, you know, waiting for the right moment or 
or just not feeling prepared. So the people waiting for the right moment, you make your own moment. You, you create that. No one's gonna be like, hey, you know, now's the time you should go do this. That's up to you. If this is something you have interest in, don't wait because eventually you will run out of time. <laughs> you know, something might happen. You might get old. You might be, you know, 25 year old, years old now saying, you know, I think I wanna do this and then wait till you're 80. And then you're like, you know what? I'm good. No, no, I think, I think I'm good. <laughs> you know? And to the people who don't feel prepared, I came off a fishing boat, you know? Like, can you change a light bulb? If you can change a light bulb, I think that you have what it takes to succeed in this field. But seriously, you know, of course you're not prepared. You don't have the knowledge yet. That's why you come into Divergence. You get the knowledge, they give it to you. They give you a little toolkit. It's like, hey, if you, if you want to do this, we're gonna give you what it takes to accomplish your goals. So of course you're not going to be ready before coming to school. The dream. Oh man, I wish I could tell you that the dream is to be the master of cybersecurity by the time I'm, I'm 45 and owner of a huge tech company. It's actually early retirement. <laughs> So I'm not gonna lie to you, you know, um, you know, I found cybersecurity because I, it aligned with certain things that I, I desired in a career, you know, like mental stimulation, you know, the, the whole troubleshooting aspect, actually having to think for work. I used to work in an assembly line where you're just like a robot. I don't want, I hate that. So it matched all those requirements, but what made me pursue cybersecurity was the potential salary outcomes without a degree. Now, I don't, I don't have a degree. And so, so anyone out there who thinks that they need a degree to succeed in this career, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm living proof. I, I'm doing very well, I'm in a great company, and I'm making some, pr some pretty decent money. Divergence gave me the tools to pursue a career I wanted. And this career that I chose is giving me the resources to accomplish my dream. I, I, I truly believe that.